I've been trying to do it right. I've been living a lonely life. I've been sleeping here instead. I've been sleeping in my bed. Sleeping in my bed. Okay, so let's. Come on, come on, do it. I know, no. Recording. Uh, recording. Let's do this. Yes. We're um, people skills. And then people skills. If you can help me get this together, it was, one of my things is, and I give you credit for this, you are persistent, <laughs> and that's a good, that's really good. No. I mean, don't give that up. I, the only reason I am persistent is. persistent and just keep pounding. Like, even when people are like, oh, have you seen this? Just say, fuck you, just be, be persistent. <laughs> I, I called you, and I'm like, look. You, can you come over tomorrow morning? You're like, yes, I'll be right there. And you're Do here, it. you're on time. Thank you. So many people are like, oh boy. Like when you called, it was like, oh, this is going to be her saying, I can't come over. And you're like, I'm right outside your door. I'm, like, okay. <laughs> I'm on. I'm for this stuff. Okay, so okay. let's start recording. Yes, all right. So, I don't know. We were just... Uh, we were. Are we talking right now? Yeah. People I'll skills. Just, I'll just edit out the stuff that is me being sassy. So, um, what drew us to you I guess my big like the first thing I always think is like where did you get the like ballsiness to do this I guess and that's a good term oh that's <laughs> good um I guess <clears throat> I worked it was funny because I was actually pretty shy when I was a kid and I watched no way. I, I sort of watched everyone else just sort I of buy that. <laughs> be no I was I was just like in high school I was very shy and then I just kind of Watched other people in awe of how what they how they were not shy, mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> I worked. Then I then I made this like goal. I was like, I'm gonna like become independent mm -hmm. and not like because I really had very little. I had very little. Um, but in high school, I didn't take any language classes because I was like, I'm never gonna need to speak any other languages because I'll never leave Michigan. Oh, okay. And that was like so. I had this really narrow worldview, mm -hmm. and then I just decided somewhere along the line, like right after high school that I was like, this is stupid. I really should um, learn more, but I didn't really want to go to college. And I um, moved to Colorado to become a ski bum or just to make my own. I was like, I'm going to move to Colorado. I'm going to support myself. I'm going to live on my own. And while I was there, I sort of started to get this more worldly view. And I, that's when I started working in restaurants oh, okay. and working in kitchens and doing that's cool. what, that's pretty much what I do. So mm -hmm. in that world of the kitchen being a chef, I, I got this, um, you know, I just really realized it was, like, all about, like, how good you were, how, mm -hmm. how well you could cook, how, you know, you had to be pretty ballsy and pretty badass to be good at it. And then I ended up working for this, got really lucky, and I worked for these people who had a small French restaurant, and they were, the um, owner was, he had his own, like, cable, it was like Wayne's World, it was a TV yes. show, <laughs> and it was called Good Morning Breckenridge, this is in Breckenridge, Colorado, oh, okay. it was called Good Morning Breckenridge, and he had this crazy TV show that was like Saturday Night Live in oh the morning. Oh, my God. And, they, and he and this other guy, it was called the Biff and Cliff Show, and they were hilarious. They would interview people. They would do outrageous things, uh -huh. and I saw that, and I'm like, I want to be on that TV show with them because I had really funny ideas, and I had really, I'm not I had surprised. a lot of stuff. So I got a, ended up getting a job at the restaurant, partially because I really loved their food, but the other part was like I wanted to be on TV. Mm -hmm. And then just hanging out with him, Jim Reinershack, and, and this guy, um, Jeff Bergeron and then even the chef Kent, everybody there was like really outgoing and yeah. really funny. And they just, I just realized it was like, it doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, what you, you know, what you do, mm -hmm. you can be really, you can just be out there in the world as long as you don't hurt, you know, anyone else or, right. you know, as long as you're like, you may hurt people's feelings, who knows, but at least you're, you know, you're putting it out there. And that's when I got that whole, that's when I just started kind of realizing that I could do that but you know and if you do it with a certain amount of class so cooking was sort of my you know I knew that I was really good at cooking and I knew mm -hmm. that I could if I could cook for people I could make them happy so I just started traveling and cooking and working and going all over and meeting all these different people and that's where I sort of got that and then at one point I just decided I wanted to be an artist and start painting and selling my work mm -hmm. and then that's when I in doing that I realized that like 80% of being an artist is promotion I mean, you can true. make awesome <laughs> art, but if no one sees it, no one knows it's about not it. worth anything. So, right. I mean, it's worth a lot, but you're never going to get it. So then I really started getting, then that's the period I lived in Portland. Or, well, I lived in Hawaii and then Portland, Oregon. And in those two places, I just supported myself doing art. But it was all that's about awesome. like going out, meeting people, mm -hmm. having art shows, making the, making the um, 
advertising mm-hmm. the pieces. I mean, as a chef, you would do that too. Like every day, we would make the menu in the restaurant. We would, mm-hmm. um, we would, uh, you know, we t- we have to tell we have to sell what our ideas were to the staff, so they'd oh, okay. sell it to the customers. Got you. So it was like partially sales too. So being an artist is really being in sales. Oh yeah, it's definitely being an entrepreneur in a lot of ways. I think. That was a long answer, but no, that's good. That's really good. We we need long answers. That's awesome. Um, I don't know. I just um, I found out when I was explaining my project in class, and like when I was talking about my experiences, um, everyone was like, "Oh, it's really obvious that you respect this guy a lot." Sorry, I know your ego. That's nice. No, <laughs> no I don't want to like, be like weird, but um, it was. Um, it definitely like doing this project has made me see a lot of qualities in myself that I like. That kind of yeah, that's good. That I hope to emulate from yeah. Your, if I, I can be an inspiration, that's amazing. You are, you are an inspiration. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> but truly, it's just like the the candidness and like the sincerity is very like infectious. So um, thank you. That's really nice to that. say. Jeez. Yeah. No, seriously. No big. <laughs> now my ego's huge. No, yeah, exactly. It's not about having a big ego. It's more about just like you know, I, yeah. I just getting along every and day, knowing what you're good at. Is not a bad thing. Either. Yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. don't try to do things. Like, I, you don't see me trying to um, climb Everest or run marathons. Oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, and just stick to the, like, stick to, like, these these awesome shots. Like, I like taking things that you see in everyday life and just making that. Like, exactly. Uh, if you can relate to something that everyone experiences, then you'll reach more people, you know? I agree. That's why coffee. Coffee. Exactly. It all came down to coffee. Like, everyone All that coffee. cooking. Was like, and then I realized I could just focus it on coffee, you know? Yeah. If you can make really amazing coffee, you can reach a lot of people. And then they're more appreciative because they're just like, ah, oh, coffee. Yeah. This is kind of like a broad question, I guess. But, like, how has working in coffee, I guess, kind of, like, held? That's I, been I, great because it's been, like, it combines everything that I was, like, everything I'd been a cook. I'd been, like, an artist. Mm-hmm. I'd been a salesman, a promoter. So Ooh. that was just, like, I just took all that stuff and put it into this and, so I got a cup of coffee. It worked out. I feel like it was all stuff that kind of like, like pieces that kind of brought you to. Exactly. It, it did. It was sort of like, in, in coffee was like the main thing I really loved. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you said you're really active in the community. I know you said you like donate bags. And yeah, we do donate a lot coffee. of um, coffee to a lot of different things. That's really and cool. Like pretty much all the uh, public schools that ask us for coffee from the site for silent auctions, mm-hmm. like bags of coffee. We That's donate sweet. that. We do the Ann Arbor Film Festival. Oh, you know. sweet. Yeah, we provide coffee for that. I mean, I think, yeah, giving to back to the community is huge. Especially because you, you're from Ann Arbor, right? Yeah, I'm, I grew up here, too. That's awesome. Yeah, so I grew up here, and then I'm, and I never thought I'd live here again. I moved away for like 20 years, but I came wow. back. Yeah. Wow. Now, this, when I came back, I just got, you know, I just sort of, it was I partially started the business here because I had a lot of, you know, roots, make it a little bit easier, you know. Yeah. I could have done it elsewhere, but there were just more resources. And also, I think they needed coffee here. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> I'm a snob, though. I know. I know. Right? Yeah. This half the reason I picked this project. I was like, he knows his coffee. We're good to go. That was good. Yeah. I've been on-